Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my November book wrap up. It's book miss day two. Super excited doing 12 days of book miss. I actually decided this yesterday, so, or today. Today when I'm filming it, yesterday when I'm posting this. But anyways, we're gonna just hop into my monthly wrap up. I'm very excited because I actually think I read 22 books this, this month, which I think is the most I've read in 2022. On like a month basis but yeah we're just gonna go through the list first two books i have are the six of crows duology i have the first book and the second book this is in the grisha verse if you have read shadow and bone i actually read it for the first time last month so this was my first time picking it up i rated both of these four stars i really enjoyed them the kind of um fantasy elements along with like the slow burn romance between kaz and inez if you or inez sorry if you guys know, you know, they are elite. They are amazing. I love the spider. I love Kaz Brecker. It's adorable. And also the show just is so well suited like for this series. It does not actually follow these plot lines. It does have a little bit from the first book, Six of Crows. But if you're wanting to watch it, I would definitely recommend and pick up these books. They are thick, but they're good. I swear. Next book I have is my first Sarah Adams book and that is The Cheat Sheet. I feel like this book gained a lot of popularity, especially because it is a closed door romance. It's a little bit more accessible for those who don't like any steam. really like this. I rated it four stars. You get some friends to lovers, fake dating, one of us is famous. You get a lot of tropes in it and I just think it's so cute and especially when they like know or they don't know that both of them are in love with the other. Like if that makes sense. I. I would definitely recommend this one. I'm glad I picked it up. The next book I read was actually I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This memoir was fantastic. I actually listened to it on audiobook. I think with Jeanette reading it just made it 10 times better. Rated it five stars, obviously. I will say definitely look up content warnings when it comes to this one because it does deal heavily with abuse, but also like even more than that, eating disorder. Disordered eating is definitely like a main subject in that book so just be careful when you decide to read that i picked up the american roommate experiment which is the second book in the spanish love deception which i read this past may i really enjoyed this one i rated it four stars i think i liked it more than the spanish deception or the spanish love deception because i loved the forced proximity that's one of my favorite tropes and that was there and then also the fact that he could cook so well Loved it. Love Deception, you kind of get the enemies to lovers, whereas this one is friends to lover. I do prefer the enemies to lover, but with something with the enemies to lovers is that sometimes their tip does not make any sense. With the enemies to lovers, you can like sometimes not understand, like, come on, you guys are in love with each other. Just realize that. Whereas friends to lovers, you have like a friendship, a friendship at stakes. And so it makes it a little bit more understandable, I think. And also on this is Lucas is Catalina's um, cousin, which Catalina's Spanish Love Deception's main character and Rosie's best friend. So it added, it added a little bit more at stake, which I really appreciated. But if you can't tell, I really did enjoy this book. I actually read two out of the three novellas that Allie Hazelwood has. I rated both of these five stars. They were so good. I enjoyed it. I actually got the fifth book um, today on Libby and I can't wait to read it. I just recommend it. STEM Romance is fantastic. Um, both of these were like enemies to lovers, which I loved and I just loved how they were done. And on the Allie Hazelwood train, I also read Love on the Brain by her and I rated that one five stars. I don't know what it is about Allie Hazelwood, but I love her. Her writing is, it's not even that like strategically good. Like I'm just being honest, like it's a romance, it's a rom-com, enemies to lovers, but with science elements added and it makes me happy gal. I love reading it. It's so easy to read. I am definitely going to immediately read the novella I got and her new book coming out I think next year. Next book I read is When in Rome by Sarah Adams as well. When I was reading Cheat Sheet my friend Grace was reading When in Rome and I ended up rating this one three stars. The reason it lost a star for me is because I thought the pacing was a little weird. It don't have any ways to say like how to make it better which isn't very helpful as a critiquer. Um, but I just felt like some of the pacing was a little off and it made the reading seem a little rushed to me. Um, but I did really enjoy it. He was a baker, which was super sweet. He had, he had like a pie shop, which is awesome. And she was famous. So again, Sarah Adams, she, she likes the, um, the one of us is famous tropes just based off the cheat sheet and when in Rome. I also really appreciated the 
the way that this story was based off of another story that already exists um Roman Holiday by or starring Audrey Hepburn. I don't know. I really appreciated it and very quick and again It's closed door romance. So there's a closed door romance recommendation for you next book I read is if he had been with me. I rated this one. Oh, what did I rate it? Hold on I rated that one 3.75 stars. It's a young adult romance sad book. I think I don't really know how you categorize it um, but yeah, I really liked it. It didn't make me cry, but I was and I knew what was going to happen, but still when it happened, I was shocked by elements of it. And I continued to think about the two main characters for days after, like a week after even. And that just means that that is a good book. It was also featured in Sarah Caroli's 12, or sorry, reading sad books for a week. And she cried, I think. I think that was her favorite book from that video. But yeah, I don't know. I would definitely recommend it, especially if you're looking for something that's at a like a young adult reading level, um, but still deals with like very hard subjects such as suicide and death and divorce and things like that. So check that one out. I have is my Colleen Hoover book of the month because I always read a Colleen Hoover every month and that is the Maybe Someday series. I don't know why this came in the new print and these came in the old print. Don't ask me. I, I did order these at the same time but yeah these books were actually kind of disappointing for me. I rated the entire series I think like a two two and a half stars. Um, I think this one is definitely the worst. I don't know it like the it did not seem consensual at all so just be aware of that and then this book right here it's just like the main character is cheating on his girlfriend with our main character that we're following and i did not appreciate that that does not make me fall in love with the characters like i was not sympathetic towards them at all this book did kind of redeem it a little bit because we get to see aftermath of that and the relationship between our two main characters from the first book while also getting the perspective of the girl that the guy cheated on in the first book if that makes sense hopefully it does but yeah i don't know this was definitely a disappointment i usually rate colleen hoover's books five stars because i love them all but this one is definitely like the worst experience i've had reading one of her books and that is like this is one of her earliest book series and it was published on wattpad which i didn't know colleen hoover ever had any books published on wattpad so it's kind of interesting to learn next book i have is a 3.75 rated book and that is the maidens by alex i'm not going to even try to pronounce his last name because i have no idea but this is the second novel by this author. His first book was The Silent Patient. And it's really cool because we actually get to see a crossover into The Silent Patient in this novel, which I really appreciated. I also really liked the added elements of Greek mythology. I'm a big Greek mythology stan. And so that was really, really fun to see. And yeah, overall, I thought this thriller was really good. I would definitely read it again in a couple of years. I knew the first plot twist, but I did not know the second one and it shocked me like I, I really was shocked and that is always really impactful as a reader is when you aren't expecting something to happen and then it does happen and you had no idea like that was never even a thought so yeah I really enjoyed this one definitely would recommend it next book is meant to be mine I rated this one two stars wasn't my favorite it's a little contemporary romance about like destiny destiny and soulmates so I thought the concept, I think the concept of this is very thought-provoking and very interesting, but I just didn't think it was done that well, honestly, to be honest. Um, and that's okay because I have other books from this author that I really appreciate, but this one just, it it was like I knew exactly what was happen, happening or going to happen while also having no clue what was happening currently and what was going to happen next, which is a very confusing place to be as a reader. So take that as you will. On the other hand of that, I have The Two Lives of Lydia Bird. I rated this one five stars. This did not make me cry, but it almost did because I just think this is, not only is it like a romance, but it's more of like self-identity. And the song Cardigan by Taylor Swift. Yeah, just keep that in mind. That isn't where my thought was going, but I thought of that and that is also very relevant to this book. But yeah, I don't know. This book just made me feel all the things. I love the romance. It made me appreciate that love exists and that you can hold on to someone. And also, like, 
appreciate someone's love and accept love from someone else. I don't know. It was just, I loved it. If you can't tell, I'm actually going to be reading one day in December by this author, Josie Silver. So I'm super excited. But if you were to pick up any book from this little wrap up, I would pick this up and then I'm glad my mom died because they were phenomenal. All right, moving along. We have a short story collection and that is Fiona and Jane. Um, I got this early January. I think it debuted in <laughs> January. I rated this one three and a half stars. I really liked it. Self-discovery, self-identity, two women navigating relationships with one another and with other people. And I thought that was very cool. It's funny because I also read Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. And this is the same thing where you have two women I like navigating their life with one another and separately and these books are done very differently but they're still both great I actually rated this one five stars it was crazy good there was a lot more to it it's also this is short stories and this is a novel that actually has a this actually does have a sequel to it so there's a lot of content here versus here but both are very impactful but yeah this one is super good i'm really excited to watch the tv show because i've heard it's very good and just like the ending of this destroyed me again i didn't cry but i almost did and that just means it's a really good book okay we're almost to the end the next book i have is american psycho this I, do I even need to talk about this? I feel like this is such a popular movie. I personally did not know it was a book until this past year. And so I picked this up. I actually read it and listened to the audiobook. I kind of did both. And I loved it. It was horrifying. Rated it four stars. It was the most graphic book I've ever read. The most detailed, the most scary. It was, it was very disturbing, but it was also very well done. And I think I got what the author was trying to get across by writing this and I don't know it, I I don't even know I have a reading blog that I will be talking about this video or I have a reading blog that will be coming where I discuss this book so look out or be on the lookout for that but yeah I don't know four stars next book we have is the captivity of the oatman girls among the apache and mojave indians this is a book written by robert stratton but it's based off of like this real girl but you can tell that he took this story and just fictionalized it and it's supposed to be from her point of view there's a lot of conspiracy surrounding this book if you can't tell i read it for class i actually rated this three stars i think because the story is very interesting but i think it's kind of messed up that this author took advantage of a 19 year old girl um to write this and profit off of this so it is a very interesting story if you ever want to learn about the actual person look up the girl with the blue tattoo or all of oatman it's a very intriguing story about a girl that does become captive by native native americans um but yeah anyways that's that and then the last book i have is disability visibility i've been reading this since september so i'm super excited to finish this this was ku's common book for this year I actually rated this five stars i will say there's certain essays in here that i liked more than others that's gonna happen in any collection of essays but i think overall this is a book that everybody should pick up to learn more about how people with disabilities are affected and how people without disabilities cater that experience towards them like they cause that experience towards those with disabilities i think it's a very interesting conversation and i really liked how we got different perspectives from we have different identities that i think make it a more um it allows us to see all across the board and i think for some people you have to see that or you think like how does that not or oh that doesn't impact me so who cares or I don't know if my rambling is making sense, but basically I'm saying you guys should read this book. It is very influential. I think it's good. It makes sense that KU recommended it as our common book. But yeah, that is the last one. I think that is 22 books that I read in the month of November. I don't know how I had such a good reading month, but I'm very excited. I read some really good books. I think I had four, four stars. And yeah, let me know what you guys read this month. I'm super excited and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Peace and love. Bye, guys.